Hey Affinity Designers, welcome back. This is episode six of Assemble Your Own Comic Toolbox. We're looking today at uh, a technique for making truly curved sound effects. Let's jump in. Normally, if you want to curve type in Designer, you have to create a curved path and then type with the type tool on the path, or you can create individual letter forms and hand manipulate them like this. Um, but it would be great if we could have a curved uh, truly curved and even slightly warped um, arc of type. So here's what we're doing. We're going to take that same asset that I created before and we're going to make this a repeating brush. Um, it's going to be a repeating texture image brush actually because we want to maintain the colors uh, the yellow and orange and, and the texture pattern. So what I've done is I've duplicated the first O and uh, I'm adjusting it accordingly because that the center of those two, the first and the third O, is going to be the, the section that repeats. Everything else is going to stay stagnant. And you can see how, with some imagination, this technique can be applied to a whole range of uh, brush types. When you're making a textured image brush, you want to make sure to go to the document setup and turn on the transparent background under the colors tab so that when you export it, you're just going to get the image and everything else will be transparent. The great thing about image brushes is that they preserve opacity and color, a uh, range of color. Whatever the image is, that's what you get in the brush. So once we've done that, I'm going to go and turn the background back to white and then add the image to the brush palette. Opening up the editor, um, we're going to drag in the head offset and the tail offset to the center of those O's. And you can increase the brush width to get a, a larger thumbnail if you want. Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking to make sure they line up okay. Um, you could also pre-measure it if you want, but I don't bother usually if I am pretty confident that I can get a good match. And there you just increase the brush width, and once you're happy with that, hit the close, and just by drawing with your brush, you get a nice repeating shape. And that can turn corners, you can do straight arcs, all kinds of different variations on this. And also you can change the color of an image brush by changing the stroke color. Um, normally you want them to be both the fill and stroke to be transparent, but you can alter the color by uh, changing that in the color palette. I'm going to run through a few different of these repeating brushes. Um, if you have a problem with the N being warped on one of the brush strokes, I would go to the strokes palette and just play around with the different cap options. Um, usually one of the squared off ones solves any um, strange effects on the ends of a stroke. This one here was made from um, uh, an image that had transparency and an, actually an image applied in the appearances palette. This one I wanted to show how you can have repeating words um, in, in uh, two different layers even repeated. This effect is great for repeated mechanical sounds and you can stack it, or curve it, do a bunch of great things with it, and of course all the um, layer effects can add strokes or, or gradient overlays. So here we are, the ones we've created so far. I just want to show you the, the variety, and I'm going to do an HSL adjustment just to show how you can adapt these image brushes because they retain all the colors. So instead of using the stroke palette, um, by using the um, an HSL adjustment, you can change all the colors in a particular brush and retain a variety of colors. This one here, I'm adding um, a gradient overlay to the click, 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 and um, just kind of playing around to get some different effects. So in addition to repeating brushes, we can also do stretch brushes. And by turning a bit of text sideways, um, we can take advantage of this to have a vertical stretching of the shape. So here I've, I've imported the zip brush, and now by drawing downward, I can have the letter, letter forms themselves deform which gives you that warp effect, but um, in, a, in a controlled way. And you notice going crazy is not, <laughs> it's not advisable, so you gotta be a little subtle with it, but um, you can get some cool effects. Um, this is just using hand-drawn type, just to show you how this works. And I've stacked the text this time, and by stacking it, and I've also turned it to the right instead of the left, and you're gonna see this allows you to, whatever brush uh, you're doing, the W will be the last thing that's drawn, so that's just kind of maybe it might be helpful for certain circumstances. And also, because I stacked it, um, you get that whoosh, like a maybe a wind effect or something like that. 
Okay, that's a wrap for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you have a question or an idea of a future video, let me know in the comments. We'll catch you next time.